Hi everyone and welcome to Christine's Creative Classroom. Today I wanted to share with you a different design of a gift topper slash ornament that I created using my Cherry Lynn Design dies. The last one that I did was such a success I thought I would try it again with a different doily and this time a smaller version so that you could decorate the tops of your smaller packages or gift bags that you wanted to present for the holiday season. Now all of the dies that I use are from Cherry Lynn Designs. They are made here in the United States and they are the most detailed, intricate dies that you can find out on the market. They're very pretty and very affordable at the same time. I do have a kit available on my blog at because every picture has a story to tell blogspot.com and I will post a link down below for you to view so that you can click on that if you'd like to go over and see the pricing of the kit. I am shipping free also for a limited time. So let me just get a little bit closer here and show you. This is a roll, I am calling this the rolled doily cone gift topper slash ornament. And all I've done, if you look at the back, is I've rolled one of the mini doilies. And what's nice about this is I can very easily make this into a 3D ornament if I wanted to hang it from a Christmas tree and decorate both sides the exact same by simply repeating the design and decorating the opposite side. So for pennies, after you purchase this die, you can make endless amounts of gift toppers or ornaments. We all know that these are pretty expensive to purchase in the store. They're anywhere from $2 to $5 a piece. And once you purchase these dies, they're yours forever. They will last you forever. And you can go ahead and create your own version or copy mine. These are my own versions. They're very simple. They're aimed uh, for the easy crafter and for the crafter who is more experienced and just wants to get some things done a little bit quicker. So here I have used the Polynesian Sales Doily, the mini one. This is what it looks like. As you can see, all those holes are going to punch out and they're going to give you this beautiful doily. And that is the backer of mine here. And then I also used a little bit smaller doily. This one is called the Ambergee Mini Doily. And it gives you this here. And then for my center right here, the snowflakes, I have the Snowflake 2 Sun... I th I'm sorry, they're called Snowflowers. And you get this die, this die, and this die. So that's three dies that you're going to receive. And they cut out very beautifully little snowflakes or snow flowers as they're called. So actually you're getting five dies with this and I am selling this kit for $29.99. Let me make a small correction. The backer of this die of this ornament actually is the smaller one, the Ambergee. The centerpiece, the red one here, is my green one, the Polynesian Sails. And I'm just going to show you very simply how to make this little rosette for the center just out of a strip of paper. And then I layered two of the snow flowers on there. And the very center is a brad from uh, small uh, spare parts from Hobby Lobby. And they are half price right now at Hobby Lobby. And you get a whole little package of them like this, 12. And I believe they're like $1.50 uh, at half price. And all I did was cut off the little brad part and adhered it to my center. So I'm going to show you very easily and quickly how to make this ornament. I'm actually going to make mine as a gift topper. And I've already started it just to make things go a little faster. You do need between six and seven of the ambergies cut out you need one Polynesian sails and you need one of each one of the snow flowers cut out. I'm only going to be using two. This one is an extra. You can layer three if you'd like, but you don't have to. Again, you can make this as your own version. Uh, mine is just a guideline and something quick and fun that I came up with. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this. 
and I'm going to make a red one this time. Now, as you can see, as I said, the cut is very intricate, very lacy, which means it has a lot of holes in it. I am going to be using hot glue, so um, I do advise you if you are using hot glue to be careful, obviously hot, and with all of these holes, that means you have more of a tendency of burning yourself. I'm using the hot glue to get a quick hold to show you for this video. I myself do use the hot glue in my regular ornaments when I make them because you're not going to see any of the um, clumps, if you want to call them that, as you adhere them together because this section is going to be covered anyway. I am just careful not to bring the hot glue all the way up to the top. So all we're going to do is simply take one of the amber gee cuts, now I've already done three here, and I do it backwards because I want, I want the shiny side of my paper to show. So if you're using patterned paper, remember that. You want the section, the side that's going to show to be on the top. I show all of my videos using just plain pattern paper because I want to show you how beautifully these turn out just with simple plain paper. So all I'm going to do is take, take this die cut and make a little point in the back and I'm going to show you, whoops, I'm sorry, I'm out of frame there. It's just coned like that. So all I'm doing is taking the two and bringing them together like this. So the guide that I used is when I turn it over, I want to be sure that I have three scallops on the top. So then all I do is I simply take my hot glue and I'm going to just put it down here at the bottom and a little way, maybe a little towards the center, and roll that back over like this. I stick my finger through the coned section like this and just give it a little press until it adheres. And when you turn it over, you should have, like I said, where you have three scallops. So the three scallops is what gives me, when I laid this all out and I did my green one, the seven that you need for the uh, basic backing. Now if when you do it you have four scallops, obviously you're going to use less die cuts. So you're just going to go ahead and do as many as you need, obviously. I'm going to show you seven. Just If I end up using less, that's fine. I just want to be able to show you how easy it is to do this. Let me try to do this in a better way where I get my fingers out of the way. So you're just making a point at the bottom like this so that when you turn it over you have three of the scallops. Adhere a little bit of the hot glue down at the bottom and halfway up the middle. Again, be careful because it is hot glue and those holes do um, leak the glue through them, so it's very easy to burn yourself. Okay, so there's mine. I've got the three scallops there. And again, I'm making sure I'm folding it from the back. and just bringing it to a little point. And you just really need to hold it long enough until it adheres. So you want your little point and your scallops. And same thing, here's the seventh one. Okay. I worry about the glue webs at the end. Don't worry about them right now. They're going to be there as your glue is drying. Then all you're going to do is take your, take your one cone, put some hot glue on it. Remember, do not go all the way up to the top. Just on the side. And then you're just going to lay it right next to the previous one. And just hold it until it adheres. And just kind of keep a uniform center going there, the, the points all lining up. And as you can see, I have four there. 
And I'm just going to proceed doing the exact same thing, putting a little bit of the hot glue and then stopping about halfway up and laying my next one there. Just hold on to it until it grabs. Like I said, I use the hot glue because it dries quicker. And I want this to um, grab hold right away as I'm showing you. You can use any other kind of adhesive that's your favorite adhesive, but if you want a quick hold, I suggest you use the hot glue. Okay, so here's where we're at right now. And I may need to do a couple more. So you're just going to go around until you have your closure there where it is all finished off. This is six. I just want to see if I can bring, I am just going to do it with the six and just pull it and bring it together a little bit more. And you can adjust them however you need to, if you need to open them up a little bit. And then just as you adjust them, and if they should come apart, just go ahead and hot glue them back together. It's just important that they're all touching up at the tops up here. This one I'm going to pull off and reapply because it was sideways a bit there. And you do have to kind of play around with them to get them how you want them to um, lay. Don't worry about the glue webs until the end. All right, so as you can see, as I'm putting this together, it looks like I just have one more piece of the pie that's missing after I adhere this, this one on here. So it's really gonna depend on how you're laying them out as to how many you need for the, back, uh, the background, if you need six or seven or eight. It looks like this one I'm going to use eight because as you can tell, it looks like I'm missing one. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, there's seven. Um, and then I do wanna show you, this is normal for it to come out like this. As you can see, some of the pieces are still adhered inside there. So I'm gonna go in with my little pokey tool. I will tell you that the paper that I'm using is really thin paper from Paper Studio from Hobby Lobby, and I purchase it when it's half price. Um, if you use really thick paper, you do have to roll the dice through your machine more than you know once or twice. I roll mine through forward, back, forward, back. So that's four times, and I did not use any type of shim or anything on these. And as you can see, those little pieces of paper came right out without any difficulty. You should not have to struggle with your dies. And cleaning them out like that should be as quick and as simple as I just showed you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do my last one here. And again, we're just making the point. And I'm just holding it, and pin holding it and pinching it in the back here so that that glue really takes hold. And that happens within seconds when you're using hot glue. And then on the last one, obviously we have to put the hot glue on both sides to put that last piece in. So just remember, stay away from the very top portion. And then we're just sliding this in here. And then I, what I do is I usually put my fingers inside there to get that hold of the very last one where I want it. Now because I just pushed it up to show you, it moved a little bit, but that's simple to fix. And then here we have the background. Very pretty. Now 
my glue webby mess is on the back, which is not a big deal, even if I want to use this for an ornament because we're simply going to just pull all those off. I also recommend you can use a hair dryer um, and zap those and they will all dissipate when you do that. And then next, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Polynesian Sales die cut and I'm laying that right over the top so those glue webs mean nothing, if, even if you're going to make this 3D, remember, because you're, you would not see all that glue on the back. And we're just layering that inside. And I only put the hot glue in the very center portion because you can see the rest of it is so detailed where it's cut. You don't want the glue oozing out of those holes. So just put it in the center. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how to make the rosette, which is this piece right here. Just in case you've never made one before, I know most people have, but I'm going to show you just in case you haven't. All you need to do is take a strip of paper, which is 11 inches long. I used an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, and I just cut it at 3 quarters inch wide. Okay, so you're using the long side of your paper, and then... I used my scoreboard. I have a Martha Stewart scoreboard. And I'm just going to show you quickly how I did it. It is scored about every three quarters. If you can see all those little lines, those are scores. And what I did on my Martha Stewart scoreboard is I just counted three slots and scored. Three slots and scored all the way down. So every three quarters of an inch. Now, when you have that all scored, you're going to have one little odd piece right here at the end. That piece gets cut off. Very easy, just cut it off. And then we're going to take this and we're just fan folding it and creasing as we go all the way down the strip, back and forth, back and forth. Very easy. Just on those lines. And about halfway, I like to give it a really good tight squeeze. Back and forth, back and forth. Okay. Then at the very end, just kind of line it up and give it another really tight squeeze. And this is what it's going to look like. We take that and we place hot glue on the very end piece, doesn't matter which one. And we are bringing it around and we are adhering it to the other end and holding it just to get it to dry. So this is what it's going to look like. You just put the two ends together, very easy. Now I am working on a craft mat. Make sure you're using a craft mat if you do this the way I do it. And all I simply do is I let it open up as much as it wants to open there on my mat and I start to just push it in a little bit in sections. It will, it will go by itself if you've creased and fan folded it enough. Of course because I'm on video it's not going to cooperate but we'll get it. My hands are full of glue here too. So as you can see it's starting to form a little a little circle here, a rosette, as we like to call it. Let me get it in there. Okay, so now I have it with the opening in the middle. I know it's probably hard to see. And I'm trying not to get my big fingers in the way there. But what I do then is I take my hot glue and I squirt a puddle of hot glue in the center. I'm on my craft mat, remember now. You don't want to do that if you're not on a craft mat. And then just push it all together and then I hold it. And I like it to be tight, so I just kind of help it along a little bit and just hold it in the center. And again, the hot glue is perfect for this. You cannot use regular glue for this portion. Um, it'll just simply keep reopening on you and you'll get very frustrated, so I wouldn't even recommend it. 
okay? And then when you're working on a craft mat, it just slides right off, and here's your rosette. Okay, so that's easy peasy to do. I might need to put a little bit more glue in there just because I pulled it up. I wanted you to be able to see what it was looking like. Um, but you know what? We're just going to go ahead and put it on here right away. And all we do is just squirt some more hot glue in the center there. And it's also going to help hold that together some more. Put it in the center. Press down. And then all I'm simply going to do is layer my um, red and green snow flowers on there next. And I like to do it um, where I put them in between the previous one, you know, slots, just like in a flower. So just go ahead and put the one on top there. Squirt a little bit of hot glue again. And put it in on top in between the slots of the previous one. And then here's where I took the brad backing off of that brad, squirt a little bit of hot glue there, and again, it's going in the center. Now, I did try to adhere the brad without removing the little metal pieces and use it as an actual brad to help hold things together, but because of all of the holes and how intricately this is all cut, uh, you were able to see the metal pieces through the holes, so I removed, just simply removed the metal pieces. Now as you can tell, you saw how quick and easy that was. This is finished other than removing the little glue webs. And here we have our topper. And again, if we wanted to make this into an ornament, all we would do is turn it around the back and go ahead and I would not redo the cones because it would make it way too um, bulky, but I would just go ahead and adhere another Polynesian Sales doily on the back, make another rosette on there, you know what, let's just do this. Since I made the one as a gift topper, let's make this one an ornament. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and put the hot glue right there in the center. And I'll also put some on my doily. You guys, that probably took me five minutes to do, and it was because I was teaching it, and it takes always takes a little bit longer when you do that. This is going to be much faster for you as you're making them. Here's the little rosette. All right. Uh, and then I need two snow flowers. Let's see what I have here. I like to cut out multiple pieces of mine in advance. Okay, so I don't have the same snow flower that I used, so we're going to use this one this time, which is the third one that we did not use on the other side, and it's okay if it's different. I'm just going to put some hot glue on there. There's that, and there's already hot glue coming through the center of that one, so we'll layer this on next. And then again, you just take your brad, And I like to cut mine off. Remember to do that away from your face. That's why I like to put my hand over the top of it. And then just squirt some more hot glue in there. Just want to see which way the berries are going. Like this. And again, finished. So here's the other side of it. So again, now this is 3D, so if we're hanging it from a gift bag, I think you pretty much want something 3D-ish. So if, as it's turning around and flopping around on the gift bag, you want it to look nice on both sides. And if you wanted to hang this from a Christmas tree, same thing. Just put a little piece of thread or ribbon, and you're ready to go. So here's our gift topper. This is our smaller version. Again, I have the kit available for sale for $29.99. Shipping is free for a limited time. You can purchase over at my blog because every picture has a story to tell.blogspot.com. Thank you for coming.